destiny that I would find a career working with people with disabilities. My whole family does it. My cousin Tom likes to joke that it's the family business, but in fact it's actually the family vocation. As a young child I was never a stranger to people with disabilities. Some of my earliest memories are from Olive Mount and New Hall, where my parents worked. I would be at all the Christmas parties and my dad used to take me on the day trips that he and the people who used to service went on. I have a cousin who grew up who has a learning dis who I grew up with who has a learning disability. I never considered them ever any different from myself. We have so many friends in the family who had disabilities who always used to be around the house. Some had quick certain quirks or mannerisms that people may find strange. But to me these differences were in the way people are was always very normal. I didn't realise until I was older that not everyone has such an experience and many do not even know anyone who has a disability. I worked for the local milkman when I was 13, collecting the money during the week and doing the milk run in the summer. Though admittedly, at that age, going to work at 3am wasn't my favourite thing to do during the summer holidays. I never really knew what I wanted to do. I remember wanting to be a lawyer for a time, but I never got considered going into pe working with people with disabilities when I was younger because I always saw it as that's what mum and dad do. I wanted to find my own way. I left school at 16 after doing my GCSEs. I went and worked for my mate's dad as a warehouse labourer. I really enjoyed that job even though the hours were sometimes long. But I knew it wasn't what I really wanted to do. When I turned 18 I started my first job in social care at a day centre on Rice Lane in Aintree. I have so many great memories of working there and found that support work is a job that can be filled with joy and something that came naturally to me. Though I enjoyed what I was doing, I still wasn't sure about what career path I would follow. I had an interest in psychology and social studies, so I decided to pursue that. I left the day centre when I was 20 to start an access course to university at Liverpool Community College. Though carried on working in residential support as relief staff. Most of my friends had went to university in Leeds and I was keen to join them. After my access course I was accepted into Leeds Metropolitan University and moved there a week before my 21st birthday. I had a great time in Leeds and whilst at uni I continued to do support work as relief staff and I also spent some time running a club night but that's a different story. Before my last year of university I became ill. Unfortunately it forced me not to be able to finish my studies and I had to move back home to live with my parents. When I moved back home I was a bit lost. I decided I would get back into support work but I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. I've always been a bit of an idealist when it came to supporting people with disabilities and I had a lot of experience in previous providers that I wasn't happy with. The main thing that always got to me is how isolated people with learning disabilities tend to be in support services. The last place I worked before Larsh, I worked with a young man of the same age as me who was very lonely and isolated. The care provider I worked for was massive and had services all over Liverpool and close to the young man's house, but they were in no way connected and did not even know that each other existed. I did what I could in the time I was there. But as a support worker, it's not easy to get someone above you to always listen in these big companies. My mum had been telling me about Lars, and at first it all seemed a bit strange to me. I'd never heard of what Lars did, and it wasn't the type of care provider I was used to. But I know my mum loved it there. So in 2014, I applied for Lars and was assigned to the harbour. I worked in flats 5 and 6 with Andrew, Colin, Jane and Tina. One thing that I can remember really struck me early on is the life that Colin had lived before I met him. I found out about the holidays he had been on, all the friends he had all around the world and how close he was with so many people. This was very much not the way it was with so many people I had worked with in other services. I then saw that this was not an anomaly and Colin's experience was common for people in Lars. I realised things were very different here to what I was used to and that there was a different focus. Instead of it being on outcomes and rigid activity plans, people were part of a big community that values love, happiness and sharing with one another. I knew then that I had finally found somewhere I belong. 
After some time in the harbour, I moved to St John's and was privileged to have the opportunity to be the team leader there. Me and Ian built up a really special relationship over that time and shared some amazing memories. He told me all about his family and his history and introduced me to his friend Hilary, who we still visit together when we can. I used to love watching the football with Peter Brennan and talk about all the places we've been. I remember one Christmas, me, Peter and Paul Cohen driving up to Formby a few days beforehand to get some posh beers from the Waitrose and have a pub lunch while we were there. That was a really nice memory that we still talk about sometimes. At the end of 2018, the opportunity came for me to become locality manager at St Sebastian's. It was sad to leave St John's. I was ready for a new challenge. We've been through a lot in my time at St Seb's and it hasn't always been easy. But the values that I have held for so long and that last hold are clear to see in everything we do there. In 2019, we were lucky to host Anne and Les's wedding. And with the help of that fantastic team, we threw the wedding of the decade. Anyone who has worked in adult services for any length of time knows how rare a wedding between two core members is. And this was one of the joys of my life to be a part of, and certainly of my career. To come to the house and see the smiles on the faces of all the guests and core members, and to see everyone dancing, laughing, and sharing an amazing time together. It was everything I always felt this job should be about. Just pure positivity and living life together. There were no staff and core members that day. Just friends celebrating a lovely moment together. Lars has brought such joy into my life in the short time that I've been here and has taught me a lot. Not to mention it has also brought me my future wife when me and Lizzie got engaged in February this year. It has given me inspiration for the future to always hold true to your values and that things will always work out in the end. I'd like to thank all the staff and core members in the harbour who initiated me into Lars. I'd like to thank the team at St John's who allowed me to be their team leader and allowed me the space to learn. And I'd especially like to thank all my team at St Sebastian's. You motivate me every day to be as good as I can be and you are an absolute inspiration. Thank you very much.